Hi, my name is Jessica Romisher. I'm a senior editor with What is Enlightenment magazine, and I'm pleased to present this interview with Dr. Edgar Mitchell, who is an Apollo astronaut. He was the sixth man to walk on the moon. He's also the founder of the Institute of Noetic Sciences, which is an organization devoted to consciousness research. I had the privilege of interviewing Dr. Mitchell at the Quest for Global Healing Conference, which took place in Bali in December 2004. And during that conference, he spoke in a very captivating way about his experience coming back from the moon and how even more than walking on the moon was seeing Earth from space on his return trip and how for him that actually catalyzed a profound spiritual awakening. So Dr. Mitchell, uh, compelled by that experience, has devoted his entire life to the exploration of the meaning of consciousness and of our inherent unity and the inherent unity of all of life. And this interview delves into his investigation into the nature of consciousness and where we're going from here as a human species. I hope you enjoy the interview. Well, there were so many things I loved about what you said, Edgar, and there were just a few points that I thought maybe we could just talk for a little bit and okay. kind of you, know, you could elaborate on some of these things. All right, go ahead. Um, because in the, you know, the magazine is very much interested in the evolution of consciousness, mm-hmm. so you're kind of a perfect person to engage <clears throat> with that. Yeah, of course, when we say evolution of consciousness, we're, we are talking a cosmology. Right. Yeah, okay. Could you say more about that, though? Well, <clears throat> I've, always, I've long held that cosmologists projecting the Big Bang or the movement mm-hmm. of the universe, mm-hmm. evolution of the mm-hmm. universe whatsoever, that no such cosmology can possibly be complete until you include consciousness or humans, mm-hmm. how and why we're humans, and, or how and why life arose mm-hmm. and continued to evolve. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the answer from standard materialist science has been that uh, life is an epiphenomenon or an accident mm-hmm. of the collision of molecular structure mm-hmm in the star building evolutionary process. Mm -hmm. I think that we're slowly getting people past that. Mm -hmm. And of course the traditional philosophies rooted in cultural tradition normally Mm -hmm. suggest that consciousness is fundamental Mm -hmm. and the scientific model suggests that matter, energy is fundamental Mm -hmm. and that consciousness is epiphenomenal. Mm -hmm. My particular approach since it is well, if we take the Cartesian model Mm -hmm. of body of Descartes, that body, mind represent different realms of reality (coughs) then there's not much that science can do with the supernatural realm. Mm-hmm. But quantum mechanics has suggested it's, that the Cartesian duality is flawed, mm-hmm. that body-mind are not two realms, but they're two faces of the same realm, namely energy. Mm-hmm. Energy energy matter is one aspect, energy information is another aspect. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> so taking a a position of creating a falsifiable hypothesis championed by Karl Popper right. then I would I would take the model that consciousness and matter arose together mm-hmm. in a self-organizing fashion mm-hmm. were that to be wrong mm-hmm. sooner or later we'll run into a dead end mm-hmm. and not be able mm-hmm. to explain consciousness if indeed consciousness is the fundamental stuff preceding the existence of matter, uh, which is is the idealist assumption. Uh, But since we can't prove that one, or disprove it necessarily, Mm -hmm. all we can do is take the other assumption and take it as far as we can take it. That's the approach I have taken. It occurred to me as you're speaking, and I, I, I sort of almost feel that this is too simplistic, and yet I was struck by the fact that consciousness through us is trying to understand matter. Mm-hmm. 
And that's one way, it, 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 you know, I suddenly realized that in a certain way that's what you're saying, you know, is that consciousness and matter are literally... You know, well, they're interconnected. Mm. <clears throat> the real question is, does consciousness precede matter? Right. Or is consciousness and matter a coherent whole mm-hmm. that in process evolves itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And my hypothesis is the latter, mm-hmm. is that it evolves itself mm-hmm. in a self-organizing fashion, mm-hmm. which may be wrong, mm-hmm. but so far as we pursue that line, mm-hmm. it continue continues to re- be validated. What would the implications of what you just described be for human evolution, for the evolution of our own? Well, what it would <clears throat> suggest to use to use traditional terminology would be that humankind is evolving toward the description of deity mm-hmm. that the ancients thought existed. Mm-hmm. In other words, <clears throat> omnipotent, omniscient, uh, are the traditional notions of deity. That would be a model that that would be more toward the monotheistic Judeo-Christian Islamic uh, model of reality. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I'm suggesting here is that the quantum potential in the zero point energy field which seems to underlie and provide the implicate order that David Bohm talked about that the quantum hologram and its formalism (coughs) seems to suggest a way to understand Mm self-organization and spontaneous Mm self-organization out of the zero point field Mm -hmm. toward creation of all possible energy matter combinations that are stable Mm -hmm. and that's what we seem to be looking at now if that turns out to be false Mm -hmm. then we have to go a different way at the moment it hasn't turned out to be false now what would a did you say quantum theology well I just said a theology theology yeah. yeah what would you project that to be well, from this, it would be that the di- so-called divine intelligence, if you want to call it yeah. that, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the quantum hologram, I've written a paper called Nature's Mind, the Quantum Hologram, mm-hmm. and to suggest that the quantum holographic formalism demonstrates that nature doesn't lose its experience, Mm -hmm. that the experience of evolution is still in the memory, as it were, the natural memory, Mm -hmm. and that species are capable of resonating with that information, Mm -hmm. utilizing that information as their own, Mm -hmm. and thus continuing to organize, evolve, and participate and grow. Mm -hmm. So that model would tend, it would tend to incorporate all these things we've talked about in the past of a overriding creative function, Mm -hmm. of a reincarnation phenomenon, Mm -hmm. of a consciousness phenomenon that is a learning phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And we can, we can write the equation to demonstrate that right now. So do you, so you're saying that within this context, Reincarnation actually seems like kind of a matter of fact in a certain way. Is that would you go that well, far? I create use a metaphor to express this because we cannot show, or with this current modeling, we cannot show that consciousness survives death. Mm-hmm. We have no modeling for that. Now, metaphysically, many folk think that is true, but within science, we can't demonstrate it's true. But the quantum holographic modeling suggests that the experience of a lifetime can be used and realized and absorbed by a subsequent human being. 
So I say a, a metaphor for that is that it is impossible to tell the difference with this modeling mm. between a new soul, mm -hmm. or rather a old soul, and a new soul with a long memory. They are they're indistinguishable mm. within this model. Mm. 